I'm Andrew Vollmer. I'm the director of the John W. Glenn Jr. Law and Business Program here at the law school, and I teach securities regulation. First, let me welcome you, tell you all congratulations. I think it's great. This is a wonderful law school. I know you have some good options, so make full use of today and learn about this law school. I'm going to talk about the Law and Business Program. And I thought I'd do that first. I'll tell you a little bit about me. And then I'll tell you about the objectives of the program, a little bit of empirical data that's been done that I think will be of benefit to you. And then we'll talk about the specifics of the program. I will try to leave question uh, time for questions, but if, feel free to ask questions throughout. I'm happy to try to respond as best I can. So first, a little bit about me. I've uh, been teaching at the law school for about two and a half years. And as I said, I'm the director of the Law and Business Program. Uh, I'm a graduate of the law school, and I spent my entire career in business law areas. I was, at, I was a partner at a large Washington, D.C. law firm for over 25 years, spent over 30 years at the firm. And I worked in many business law areas, antitrust, international litigation. But I mainly specialized in securities enforcement, which is when the SEC or the Department of Justice investigates someone for a potential securities law violation. So I represented people who were being investigated. I spent about three years as the Deputy General Counsel at the Securities and Exchange Commission. So I got a much broader experience there. So that's a little bit about me. Let me tell you about the, the Law and Business Program. First, the objective. And our objective is to provide the law students here with premier training for practicing in areas related to business. We want our graduates to be valuable to clients, whether they're corporations, whether they're clients of law firms, whether you're in-house, whether you're at a government agency. And we want you to be valuable as quickly as possible. Therefore, one of the things that we want to do is make you familiar with the most difficult and sophisticated legal issues you are likely to encounter in your early years. So we want the program to act as a bridge between the basic academics, which you would start out in the first year, and then proceed using the Law and Business Program as a bridge from the academic world to the realities of practicing law. So that means our emphasis of our law and business program is, is a little different from some other law schools. The emphasis is on you. It's on the student and preparing you to practice law. Other law schools do that as well, but some of the law schools you might be thinking of have a different aim for their law and business program. So I'm going to tell you how we do that in a, in a minute, but two points of clarification that might occur to you. The law and business program I'm talking about is the program here at the law school. It does not lead to a separate credential. It doesn't lead to a certificate. Think of it as a concentration or a major. And the program here is different from a joint JD MBA. Virginia offers a joint JD MBA, but that's not the program that I'm talking about today. OK, let me talk a little bit about some data that you might find useful. Should help you understand the objectives and the structure of our law and business program. And, and there were two surveys that were done 
one by Harvard Law School and one by Berkeley. Let me talk about the Harvard one first. Harvard conducted a survey in 2013, and it surveyed 125 practicing lawyers of all uh, ranges of experience. The lawyers came from the 11 law firms that were the main employers of Harvard Law School graduates. So big law firms, basically. And the survey asked three basic questions. The first question was, what were the most important and useful business methods courses, not law courses, business methods courses, that you took that have been valuable to you in your practice? The answers were accounting and corporate finance, and then down a notch, negotiations and business strategy. The second question was, what were the most useful and important basic business law courses? And they were corporations. Some places call it business organizations. We still call it corporations, but its substance is broader. Mergers and acquisitions and securities regulation. Down a notch, another uh, sort of a big chunk, but including bankruptcy, antitrust, tax, things of that sort. And the third question in the survey is, what skills or areas of knowledge have been the most important to you in practice? And these now actually now circle back around on earlier answers. The answers were accounting and financial statement analysis, teamwork, that's pretty interesting. Financial markets and products, negotiation, and business strategy. So Berkeley did a slightly different survey. They did it in 2014. They surveyed transactions lawyers, so not litigators. Tra uh, junior, what, and the question is, what skills do, a, do, do, a, do junior transactional lawyers need? And the answers were roughly the same. Slightly different questions, so slightly different answers. But ethics, that's pretty interesting. Fact development, that's also interesting because that's mainly what you think of litigators doing. But it was important to, for transactional lawyers. And then negotiations, accounting and financial statement analysis. That should help guide you and your thinking about the kinds of courses, skills areas that you should be thinking about if you're interested in a business law practice. So let me tell you now, let's go to the details of the law and business program here. And I think what you'll see is that we've structured the program to achieve many of those objectives that the surveys have identified. So we have different components to the law and business program. And, and I'll go over that. We think, and it's mainly a curriculum-based program, which as I've explained is the emphasis is on trying to develop you as a student to prepare you to be valuable to your clients as quickly as you can do that. So we have, think of our program as having three main categories of courses. There are business methods courses, there are basic business law courses, and then the third category is advanced courses. So let me tell you about, about those. Business methods courses is the first category. So what do I mean by that? I mean courses that have content that you would typically find in a business school, not the law school. They are courses to help you understand what business clients are thinking and how they approach problems, what's important to them, how they think, and also what language do they use. Because as a legal advisor, it's important to understand what your client's objectives are, as well as the language that they're speaking.
The principal business methods course that we offer, and we offer it every semester, is a course called Accounting and Corporate Finance. The purpose is pretty much what it says. It's to provide a foundation in key accounting and financial reporting, financial statement analysis concepts. This is for the group of first year, uh, the group of law students who do not have a background in business. A lot of uh, law students have terrific backgrounds in business already. They either were business majors uh, in college or they've spent several years working in different kinds of business, including investment banking. Some law students are CPAs. I've had in my securities regulation courses. They don't need accounting and corporate finance. But I was an English history major when I came to law school. And the course wasn't offered then, but I certainly could have used it. Otherwise, you have to learn it on the job, right? It's not that it's impossible to learn. The question is just systematic study versus piecemeal, hodgepodge, serendipity of the projects that you work on as a lawyer. So it's a terrific course. First, it's a four credit course. First half is accounting. Second half is the basic ideas of corporate finance, which is discounted cash flows. How do you value securities? How do you value businesses? Things of that sort, things I've picked up, as I said, uh, just through experience. The course, by the way, is not available to those who have extensive business backgrounds already. It's really aimed at those who need to be exposed and uh, to learn a little bit more about some of the financial and accounting concepts. We also have other business methods courses, corporate strategy, teamwork. Um, one of my objectives as director is I want to add a few more courses, business methods courses, to be available to the law students. We have courses on negotiation. So as you've heard me already, that's really a key area. That, by the way, is an area that is important to a practitioner in every field. So you do negotiations, whether you're a litigator, whether you're a transactions lawyer, or whether even if you're a regulatory advisor. So negotiations is a really important thing. All right. So that's the first category, business methods courses. I stress that it should be and is a small part of a law student's education. We're not here to educate business executives. We're here to educate lawyers. But for the business law area, there needs, there's overlap, and there needs to be an effort to make sure that the law students, and ultimately lawyers, have been exposed to some of the thinking and analysis that business executives use. So second main cat category, core business law courses. We offer full, the full range of introductory business law courses. Probably doesn't make us any different, better or worse, than other law schools you might be thinking about. But let me tell you. Let me put a little detail on it. So the kinds of courses that you would start out with after f first year, I think you all know pretty much, don't you, that first year's um, already set for you, except there are two electives in your spring semester. A lot of first years take the accounting corporate finance course then. But so your first year is fundamental standard law school courses. Second year, you ought to be thinking about these fundamental business law courses. What do I mean? Corporations, securities regulation, federal income tax, antitrust, intellectual property courses. I mean, I can go on and on. But, but that's the, the array of things that you ought to be considering. Pretty indispensable corporations, securities regulation income tax. One particular aspect of our program 
the Law and Business program here, is that we offer what we call an enhanced law and business version of some of these core business law courses. So what does that mean? It means the course is a little more challenging and sophisticated and uses more financial and quantitative concepts than the standard business law course. So we offer these in these enhanced law and business courses in corporations, securities regulation, bankruptcy, corporate finance, courses like that. And there is a prerequisite to get into the enhanced law and business versions. It is that you have either taken the accounting corporate finance course or you've got the equivalent background. As I said, we'll have a lot of, a lot of law students who will have the equivalent background. So category two is the main business law courses. And we have the slight variation of the enhanced law and business versions. So after that, there's a progression of increasingly advanced courses. So the third category are advanced courses. And they come with a really amazing range of topics. And so think about your evolution as a law student. You start out with the first year main law school courses, second year, you might have gotten some experience, by the way, in your first year summer. Second year, you should be starting to take the main business law courses. Second summer, nearly all students spend a second summer at uh, some sort of legal position at a law firm or some other organization. So you will begin to find areas that you're interested in, that you're good at, and that you like. You might know that now. I mean, I certainly did not when I went to law school. Um, and there's no, not a problem with that. There's no problem with not having a very good idea even after you graduate. That's fine, too. But some people do start to identify areas they care about. With our range of advanced courses, you can begin to specialize. You don't have to. You can continue, and I would encourage you to try to continue to be diverse in the courses that you choose. But the advanced courses are going to cater to your particular interests and also develop your thinking and knowledge about the more specialized areas. Again, let me give you some examples so you know what I'm talking about. So we have specialized courses in the mergers and acquisitions area. We have courses offered, uh, including by a former Chief Justice of the Delaware Supreme Court, on advising boards in M&A transactions. We have advanced courses on private equity and venture capital financing. We have, a we have several startup financing courses. This could be of interest and appeal to lots of you. So in the high-tech area, you know, it's all about getting financing. You've got to take sec regs first. Just remember that. We have advanced courses in the litigation area. We have international litigation, civil litigation courses. Um, I teach uh, uh, both the introductory securities regulation, but I teach a course on advanced topics in securities regulation. So. Those, that's just, those are just some examples. There are, are many, many courses. They're taught by both full-time faculty, but lots of uh, practitioners, so law firm partners, people from government, people from corporations who have years of experience in the field but also have an interest in teaching, offer many of these courses. Another feature of the advanced courses is that they often are very practical and skills based. They're not just lecture classes using standard case books. There's a role for that, I assure you. Securities regulation is a perfect example. The way to start out learning about securities regulation, and it's a difficult course, 
is with a lecture and a case book. But as you, if you find that's an area you like, there are better ways to become familiar with the, the challenging current issues of the day. And that's what the advanced courses do. And so you will do things such as, we have, a, we have courses that look at the actual transaction documents in corporate transactions. So an M&A transaction or a large uh, um, commercial contract of some sort. You'll actually look at examples of contracts. I teach a course on uh, securities enforcement. So we do some practical exercises, two practical exercises. One, we do a mock testimony that, uh, from an SEC investigation. So that's when the SEC lawyers take testimony from a witness and the witness has a defense lawyer. So we do a simulation of that. We also simulate a motion to dismiss um, exercise or motion to dismiss the stage of a class action. So the students pick whether they want to be a defense lawyer and move to dismiss, or whether they want to be the plaintiff's lawyer and oppose a motion to dismiss. And so we do an abbreviated uh, set of papers in a motion to dismiss uh, of a class action. So those are examples. There are lots of examples. There are classes that spend time on negotiations and negotiating contracts. So. The point is, I'm trying to build up a picture for you of moving from the academic world ultimately to practice, using the law school as a bridge to do that. We also have other opportunities for hands-on experience. We have clinics. We have uh, what we call the entrepreneurial clinic now, which is where law students help business students or students from around the university who are starting up companies, but they need a lot of legal help. So this clinic, which is of course uh, guided by some professors, allows law students to act as the lawyers for some startup companies. So I think I've spent a lot of time talking. I would like to take some questions. Last, my, my last point, uh, two, two quick points. One, there's a lot of information on the Law and Business Program on the website, including a proposed uh, course schedule from first year through third year. And the last thing is, it's, the Law and Business Program is not totally curriculum based. There are student organizations uh, that concentrate on the law and business program, including an investment club. And there are several journals. There's, a, in particular, the Virginia Law and Business Review uh, concentrates on law and business topics. So I hope I've given you some idea. I'll take questions. Go ahead.